being good at something that you love gives you a lot of confidence. Mm-hmm. And so when I started doing stand up, you know, right in college, I was like 21 or 22, didn't have confidence until I started doing well on stage. And then suddenly everything changed. Like my whole life, the way I thought of myself, the way I carried myself, the way I talked to people, the way I talked to girls, it just changed, you know? Yeah. All came from stand up. Being really good at something that I loved and wanted to be good at was awesome yeah so that sort of changed everything uh for me and then and then you know i started acting as nerds and all of this stuff and this industry it really puts you in a box it really is like this is what this person does this is what they play and after doing that for years i was like you know there's so much work that i don't have access to i feel like all they want me to do is play this kind of beta male and uh, you know and that was 10 years ago i did that special and that's how I presented myself. And right. Part of but, it was so that's what I'm saying. Like as much as it's their fault, it's partially like sure. you were. That's how you kind of thought of yourself. That's right? how I thought of myself, and that's how I thought I could get work, and that is how I got and, work. And stand up will will be a negative. It's a bit like you get laughs saying it, so then you're like, I guess this is who I am. You know what I mean? Like sort of, and that is how I felt. But you know, I had that thing of that I think someone like Conan has, you know, where all his jokes were about how he's beta, but he's not. No. Conan's alpha. Yeah. Sort of like that. So I really had that, like, you know, drive and motivation and ambition and all this stuff. My jokes on stage were about how I'm terrified of stuff. But in real in real life, I really was, you know, I wanted to be really good at it. I wanted to be successful. I wanted to, like, crush on stage. If I went on a show, I wanted to be funnier than everybody else. I wanted to bury my friends, you know? That's very fun to acknowledge. Yeah. And that, and I love, I always knew that about you. You did? And I always knew that about you. Yeah. So I always knew that about you. So I'd go to, like, this sort of communal yeah. meltdown thing. And I was like, no, this, no, is, for, this is for keeps. Yeah. This is like there is definitely a competition here. Oh yeah. And it's not it's not that. it's not a commune. No. It's it wasn't a, for me. It was for some people. It was for right. a lot of people. And I know that some people didn't like that about me. That at the meltdown, which was such a great room and this communal space, that I was sort of like, I wanna do I wanna invite all these people to my show. All these really funny people, the funniest people in the country. Every famous, you know, comedian yeah. did that show. And on that night, I want to bury them. <laughs> I want to be funnier than them. That's the spirit of alternative comedy, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm you know, not, I totally, I don't, I never think of burying people, but I do think of like, I want to come in first. I want to come in first for sure. I don't. I, I was always like, no matter how good my set was, if somebody did better than me on that show, I wasn't that happy. Because it's like, oh, it was possible to do better. Yes. Let, I want to talk about the psychological underpinnings of that, though. Okay. You, my desire to win, your desire to win. Uh, and I don't think that there's anything wrong with it, by the way. Like, I don't, I, it's a part of myself that I'm, I, I like. Meaning, like, I'm not ashamed of the of being competitive yeah i think it's fucked up when you're not if you're not rooting for your friends if you're not my my thing is i the only way i win is if i really prepare yeah so it's like it's it's to me it's like motivation for like you have to prepare for sure you have you can't wing it i can't wing it i can't wing it either i can't i can wing it here and there but it it's not um it's not like uh, uh, I can't count on it. I mean, the ultimate block. I don't know if it's a block or it does lead me to being a little bit unsatisfied. I don't want to say unhappy because I am generally pretty happy. My self-worth ultimately is too tied to my career and what I'm doing. My, 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 my worth as a human being is too based on how I perceive myself uh, as being at my job, I don't have that, like, it don't matter. I'm like, if I, that's what was hard when I would do stand up all the time. If you have a bad set, you feel bad about yourself until day, the next, yeah. yeah the, that day fucking sucks, doesn't it? Yeah. It's the same with like acting. You know, if I have a day on set where I don't think I was at my best, that like really, really, really makes me feel like shit. I feel like I'm, like I'm not like a worthy person. Too much of my worth is not 
inherent. Too much of my worth comes from uh, how I think I'm doing. Totally agreed that I'm in the same boat. We both realize like too much tied up in this and are we fucking ourselves long term? I think we are. I don't know if you're born with it or it's you learn it. I know I've been like this since I can remember, Mm -hmm. like with studies. I was a big nerd. I wasn't, you know, good at sports or cool or good title for for a special big nerd. You hulked out. (laughs) And then I hulked out. But I really, really cared. Big nerd. Yeah, that's the next one. (laughs) Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah. Did you like it, though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe. And then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. Although I'm not really used to the green screen.